Enough announcements. We're going to get to our second to last speaker of the afternoon. Uh, she is CEO and health activate, of Health Activator, which organizes online video conferences for the science-based health, brain fitness, and longevity community. Chairman of the Personalized Life Extension Conferences held in 2012 and 2010. She co-founded Foresight Institute, the leading nonprofit public interest group on nanotechnology, and has organized over 30 nanotech conferences. She's credited with uh, coining the term open source software and is a frequent speaker on emerging technologies. Find love and a life partner using science and technology. Everyone welcome Christine Peterson. Hello builders. So I'm here to talk about finding love, whoa. Let's go, let's try to make this work, okay. Finding love and a life partner using science and technology. Okay, just a few caveats. This talk applies to straight monoamory or straight polyprimary long-term relationships. In other words, this is about your life partner and it's about your heterosexual life partner. I apologize strongly to our gay friends. I don't think anything in this talk may be useful for you, but uh, you may find it amusing. Um, okay, I'm going to be making a lot of generalizations. Men are like this, women are like that. Obviously, there are exceptions, and I want to apologize up front for that. But to get through this in the time we have, I have to do it. Uh, it's going to be sexist. At work and at home and, and at school, we're supposed to pretend that men and women are very similar. But you know what? When it comes to sex, there are sexual differences, right? So it's, they're very different. And we're going to just get that right out on the table. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot about um, DNA, but I'm going to be saying uh, things like, well, your DNA wants this and that. You know what I mean, right? This comes out of evolution. It's, I'm just being anthropomorphic. So um, I'm going to speak to the ladies primarily because for two reasons. One is it's easier for me, and the other is that it's mainly the ladies who I feel have been making errors in this area. Um, and, but the guys here are all smart enough, so all you have to do is do the mirror image of what I'm saying. You can figure this out. Okay, so what's the goal? The goal, I'm assuming, is you want a deep, lasting love and a very long-term relationship, at least 25 years. So this is, this is the big one. Okay. So what's going on? You see a lot of, this is, I think there's almost an epidemic of this. You've got women complain that men refuse to commit even after years of living together. She has pair bonded, but the, he has not. Why not? I think there's a lot of this going on. Okay, whoa, I'm still learning to use this. Okay, you can, you're getting to see all these sexy pictures, it's great. No, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, I'll learn. Okay, so basically this is about brain chemistry. Uh, here's the basic point, if you don't listen to anything else, here's the basic point. Orgasms have let, have wim, give women a high oxytocin level but they don't necessarily work that way for men. He gets about 30 minutes of oxytocin and then it wears off, okay? And then he's on to the next thing. So, so what is not working here? You probably have heard of the three date rule, which is where you wait three dates before you have sex. I've been told there are communities that are engaging in the one date rule, which is you don't wait at all. Um, and at the bottom, it's cut off here, it says, Another thing that doesn't work, living together to, quote, see if it works, unquote. So these are things that I, I am asserting do not work for uh, the long-term relationships. So what does work better? So it turns out what he needs, ladies, this is a very simple point, what he needs to form these long-term pair bonds is in the beginning, he needs dopamine. That's the brain chemical that he has to have. That is a, it's the wanting chemical. Um, it's motivation chemical. Um, so, and he needs to have, um, 
he ne also needs oxytocin, which is the bonding chemical. But the interesting thing is, he's got to have these before he has his first orgasm with you. In particular, I think what's going on is he has to get up to a certain level of dopamine in his brain with respect to you. So he needs to want you for a period of time, okay? So there's a great movie that you, that you can watch to see how this happens. In fact, once you understand the basic point, you see this throughout popular culture and popular uh, music. Um, the movie is Pauline at the Beach, and there's a wonderful French man. I won't try to do the accent, but um, he has just had a relationship with a woman and then kind of walked away. And his friend asks him, why did you do that? And he says, women need to let themselves be desired. And that means they, ju they had jumped into this relationship very quickly. There was no waiting period. He didn't get his dopamine. Now, he doesn't, that's not how he's thinking about it, but that's what happened. He didn't get the dopamine he needs to have a, a long-term, to form that bond with her. I think you better move the, uh, this is not going. How about the next slide? Is he up there? Yeah, right. Okay, so you see these two monkeys. Um, we need to, what I'm, what I'm suggesting is we need to accept our animal nature here in the mating process. It's not the frontal cortex that makes these decisions for us. Um, it's not about intelligence per se. It's, you have to look at evolution. She, what is she, human females, what, have, what are human females evolved to want? They need in their mates. They need strength, they need skills and resources. What has he evolved to want? It's cut off at the bottom, the key point. He wants youth and beauty because those correlate with fertility and those are very important to him. Uh, at the bottom it says homemaking and then highlighted it says sexual loyalty. This is absolutely critical to him. Okay, there are two ways that human males, uh, that, there are two ways that animals in general mate. Some species are one way, some species are the other way. Humans can do either one. At least the males can. On the left, we have the R style. This is the low investment style of reproduction. Uh, and this, this lady is, uh, it looks like you're not going to, it's not going to be too difficult to have um, a sexual interaction with her. This is the friends with benefits or easy style. Now, on the right is, is, a symbolic, is a symbol of the other style, which is the K style. This is very high investment reproduction. She's the one. In other words, this is the woman I'll stay with for decades. This is the mother of my children. Now, even if you don't want children, this is, this is your primary relationship that you're building here. And human males can go either way and, and generally do in different parts of their lives. So ladies, when you meet a man he's, and start to have a relationship with you, the lower parts of his brain, not his frontal cortex, the deeper parts, the older parts of his brain are sorting you into one of these two categories. And now you, you may not care too much. Maybe, maybe you're, maybe you're uh, not yet in this, in the, uh, at the time of life when you're looking for a life partner. Maybe you're in the exploratory phase of your life. The girls just want to have fun stage of life, and then you don't really care which category he puts you in. Um, but, it, but most of us eventually move to another time in our lives where instead of exploration, we're into, I'll say, building in this, in this audience. We're into building something, whether it's we want to build a home, we want to build a, um, a long-term uh, relationship with someone, maybe a family. Maybe we want to build a family. Most women and, and most men too, maybe not in this audience, but most men, women and men uh, do want a family. So why is he so anxious about this difference? The reason is because if you look at the, they've done studies of the DNA of, uh, of people and to try to figure out how many people have a father other than the one that, uh, that society thinks is going on. I mean, in other words, how, m how much cheating is going on by mothers? That number is varied, but I've seen estimates between 1 and 5 percent. So what that means is for those fathers who have uh, gotten the, the bad end of this deal, they have made a huge investment which has gotten them zero payoff. 
Okay, so fathers who made, men who, males who've made that mistake over the millennia, they get weeded out of the population by other males who are moving in on them. So it's super important to human males that this not happen to them, okay? They're very sensitive about it. So you look at these two ladies at the top, which one of these is he gonna have a little more confidence in? He's gonna have more confidence in the one on the right, right? So the, I'm using the one on the left as a symbol of someone who moves quickly to a sexual relationship. Okay, you, you may have noticed the women go for the bad boys. And, and hopefully you all know what I'm talking about here. We're attracted to the bad boys and why, first of all, the good guys are driven crazy by this behavior of ours. And so why is that? Why are women attracted to these bad boys? Um, it's, it's the, we do our style mating too. We do, the, we do low investment mating too in the sense that, although we're always stuck raising the children, um, we could, some, some women tolerate that kind of behavior in their mates, and the reason is that uh, genetically, the attraction that women feel to these bad boys, I feel it's because, and I'm going to use this anthropomorphic language, I think it's, it's her future sons calling out to her saying, come on mom, I'm going to be a great player, just let me be born. So he's going to be like daddy, okay, so she feels this attraction. Um, hopefully, ladies, um, you know, eventually we figure out that, yeah, that will work and it will be great for my genes, but I'll have a terrible life. I'm going to have a miserable marriage if I do this. Okay. So, what's the procedure we're actually trying to make happen here? What we want to do is make these hormonal cascades, the falling in love hormonal cascades, happen in these parties. And it sort of has to happen before the first orgasm that you guys have. That's how it's got to, how to happen. So, so the, what's the procedure? This slide is a little cut off, but I'll say it. So first, you want to screen and meet as many as possible. That's called dating. It does not involve having sex right away. Um, so if you do that, Eventually, one of these men who you're dating, ladies, will have his hormonal cascade. How will you know this? You can't miss it. He keeps, he keeps trying to suck up all your time. You know, he's always calling. He wants you to do this. He wants you to do that. He wants you to meet the family, meet his friends, do everything with him, see him at his best. So then the, you, have a very, you have a period of time, ladies, when he's had his and you have not had yours yet, you still have your rational mind in functioning, okay? This is your last chance to try to evaluate whether this man is actually good for you or not. You have to figure out all these things. First, do you feel physically safe with him? Now, you may think that this is an obvious point, but many women somehow manage to end up with men who actually abuse them physically. So are you physically safe? Are you emotionally safe? Is he an emotionally safe person for you? And finally, are you financially safe with him? It's okay to look at these factors. You haven't fallen in love yet. He, he may have done so. He Apparently in this sequence, he's, he's already gone. But you can still think clearly. It's not too late. And you're supposed to be looking for these showstoppers. And how do you, let's say you decide he's a safe choice. He's a good guy. But you don't love him yet. Maybe you're not even physically attracted to him yet. That's okay. That's a normal stage, okay? This is what's called giving the good guys a chance, okay? Maybe he doesn't turn you on the way the bad boy did. You don't have that immediate sexual attraction, but you, you give him a chance, okay? So how do you do that? You spend time with him alone. You do exciting things. That helps get the dopamine up for both of you. Um, you s watch him do anything he does well. It could be his work, could be some avocation of his, it doesn't matter. Anything he's doing well, you want to watch him do it. He may be, he may be funny, watch him tell jokes, whatever it is. Um, and there's one other way I forgot to list, which we did upstairs in the authenticity session, session, which is look deeply into his eyes. I'm not sure the teacher of that session knows that makes you fall in love with people when you do that. So it was pretty intense. So finally, number five, after you go through all this, eventually you ladies will have your hormonal cascade, you'll feel yourself falling. It's like, it's a very, you can't miss it, okay? If I had more time, I'd go into the fact 
that you can actually have a great relationship without having number five. Because ladies, I just explained to you earlier, if you have enough sex with him, you're going to have lots of oxytocin. And that's love too. So you don't have to do the classic falling in love. You can do the gradual falling in love. And I think most women without histories have done it that way because they weren't given a choice of who to marry. <coughs> okay, so how do you find these people? You might think they're here at Bill. You know what? They're sort of not here, and here's why. Um, I used to think, oh, I'll go to these cool conferences and meet men. That's not how it works. And the reason is that most of the guys here, if you add up all the things, there's, they're either in a relationship, um, or they're maybe already married, or maybe they just came out of a relationship, they're not ready to make any kind of long-term decisions, um, or they're gay, or something, right? So actually the number of guys who are ready for some kind of long-term relationship right now, the, av the, the, the number is not that high. So what I suggest is you go online, go to the services that make it clear that this is for people who are serious about stuff. Um, I use eHarmony just because it's really clear, it's right up there and you can be really clear about what you want, right? Whether you want marriage or children or you don't want children, you can just make it super clear and they will, and then they, they connect you and they never connect you with somebody who wants something different. You can use any online dating service that way. Just be super clear in your profile of exactly what you want. And of course you want to, you want to, uh, meet in person as fast as you can because there are chemical factors. You literally sort of have to smell each other. There's no point in having an online romance because then when you meet it may not work out. Uh, ladies do not chase men. They don't like it. And You've heard that before and I figured out why it is. It's because evolutionarily and throughout history because of this cheating factor women have uh, and their love of the bad boys, there are women who get pregnant and then are left alone. And they only have a short period of time, like a month, maybe two months, to, to find somebody else and either get him to agree to take her on or trick him. So men don't like to be chased because it makes them suspicious about what's going on. Not in their frontal lobes, but deep down. Okay, we went that way. Whoa. Okay, I'm going to skip over this, how to stay connected. You want lots of oxytocin, that's a whole separate talk. If you're both high income, you may want to think about other things other than marriage. You can do a relationship LLC, you can do a tax divorce, you can be permanent fiancés. Um, I know people who've done most of these and that's fine. If, you, if you're not both high income, marriage still works pretty well. By the way, guys, um, Ladies really like biceps. It's not that hard for you to grow them. You can do this. They grow pretty fast if you just lift some weights. <laughs> Here's two useful books. Um, I use the one on the left. It, the 90 days is not true. It actually takes 150 days. But it does work. And so um, I'm at healthactivator.com. I'm easy to find on the internet. I'm at foresight.org. Um, if you want, you know, we're, we're probably going to be doing a book and more videos and whatnot. If you want more details, there's lots of stuff I couldn't put in here. But I, I hope you'll try this. If you want a life partner, I hope you'll try this because, you know, I, I, I did it. It worked really great, really pretty fast, and I'm very happy. So I want you all. And so here's why it's important. We all want to save the world in various ways, but if your personal life is screwed up, it's really hard to focus. So it's great to get that squared away, you have a good relationship and then you can go out and go to space and uh, you know, cure poverty and do longevity and all those great things. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. So come see me if you have questions and give me your email address, I'd love to talk.